welcome to Intro to Interval Notation. I had a really cute intro where I did like a whole blooper and... <sighs> anyway, <laughs> you should get some notes so that you can learn the dank dank. Okay, so let's... Math with Miss B. Math with Miss B. There's a thousand other places that you'd rather be. But you're watching Math with Miss B. All right, interval notation. Interval notation is used to describe the set of uh, describe a set of numbers. Interval notation can be used to describe the solution set of an inequality, and interval notation can be used to describe the domain and range of a function. Fun facts about interval notation. So, interval notation looks like so like that. You see me? See what I did there, Miss Tabitha Brown? I feel like she says it with a little bit more flavor, though, than I just said it. Anyway, um, so I'm going to show you what set notation looks like and what the notation looks like on a number line, okay? So if I have parenthesis, A, B, close parenthesis, all right, in set notation, what that, what that notation basically means is numbers between A and B. So pretend like A is 1 and B is 25. It's numbers between A and B, okay? But it doesn't include A and B, all right? So... This is set notation. Set notation, you read it as x is the set of all numbers such that x is greater than a and x is less than b. That's how you read that, okay? And then this is what the graph looks like. So notice on the graph, a, which in your head you can pretend is one, and b, which you can pretend in your head is 25, okay? But my original, Notation for interval notation had parentheses for both numbers. So on the number line, A gets parentheses, B gets parentheses. The number line is the easiest part. It's that set notation stuff in the middle that y'all be getting tripped up on. But it's fine. We gonna get it together. Okay, so let's do bracket A, B. Brackets mean that A and B are included in the values, okay? So um, it's gonna be the same exact thing for set notation, except now I have equal twos. You see how it's the same thing? X is every number such that x is greater than or equal to a, x is less than or equal to b. So what is the number line going to look at like? Boom! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so bracket on a, bracket on b. Remember, in your head, you can pretend like a is 1, b is 25. Just random arbitrary numbers that I chose. 1 could be anything. Um, a could be anything, I mean. B could be anything. We're just pretending right now. But what I do know is that a is a smaller number than B. B is the bigger number, A is a smaller number. That's how it's always gonna work, okay? Um, so now we're gonna do parentheses A, close parentheses, I mean, comma, infinity. So infinity is not a real number, right guys? Infinity is a concept, okay? Infinity is, um, it's, it's, it's uh, an idea, yeah? <laughs> okay, so anyway, so, if I'm going all the way to infinity, infinity is not a fixed place on the number line. Infinity just means I keep going on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. So basically, it's every number that's bigger than A. And look at that. X is a number such that X is greater than A. So on my number line, ooh, we have an arrow on my number line now. That's a little different, okay? So we got to pay attention to that, okay? Um, anytime I have an infinity, I have an arrow in the direction of the infinity. Notice that the A had a parenthesis in it, so the A still has a parenthesis. So now let's look at our last example, which is negative infinity to B. So that means I start at negative infinity and I end at B. Okay, so all the values, remember, because B is on the right-hand side, it's the bigger number. So all the values, negative infinity all the way to B, that means everything less than B. So that's what's going to come up. So when I'm doing my number line, remember, infinities always get arrows in the direction of the infinity. So I'm going to have an infinity, an arrow on that side, and then the B has a bracket. So my graph has a bracket. You see me? You see me? Okay. Uh, <laughs> now, I'm gonna, we're going to do the same thing. We have five more different variations of it, and I'm going to see if you guys could figure out what's going on. Okay? So first of all, this is my interval notation. So for the first one, I have bracket A, 
B parenthesis. Okay? Bracket A B parenthesis. Hey! So we're going to do set notation and we're going to do number line. What do you think the set notation looks like? Look at your notes from the back that you just took. What would you write? X is the set of all numbers such that X is greater than or equal to A and X is less than B. We use the equal to because I have a bracket. Okay, so on my number line, number lines are easy, right? All I do is take a bracket on the A, parenthesis on the B. Let's see if you could do the next one. Do 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 without me. Do 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 do. Okay, so. X is a set of all numbers such that X is greater than A and X is less than or equal to B. So on my number line, there goes my number line, parentheses on the A, bracket on the B. Hey, make sure you shade the middle people. Okay, so now we're getting into infinities, right? So I have bracket A, close parentheses, infinity. <clears throat> it's early, so it's fine. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to think about from A to infinity. What kind of numbers are after A, right? And all the way to infinity. Every number that is greater than A. And because A has a bracket on it, it's A is greater than or equal to. X is greater than or equal to A. So remember on your number line, infinities always get what? Arrow! Okay, good. So I would start at A and go all the way to infinity. A had a bracket on it, so my graph would have bracket A, arrow all the way to infinity. Now I have negative infinity to B. Remember, infinities always get arrows in the direction where the infinity is. So I'm going to have an arrow on the left because the infinity this time is on the left, right? And it's negative infinity, so that means it's the smallest value in the world. So X is less than or equal to B. I mean, not equal to, ooh, excuse me, why did I say equal to? Just less than, because there's no bracket, right? It was just a parenthesis. So, uh, my graph is gonna have an arrow in the direction of the infinity, and it's gonna stop at a parenthesis at the B. Boom. So now we have our last possible combination. And that last possible combination is negative infinity to positive infinity. What is that? Well, it's all real numbers, of course. And so you would say X is a number such that X is all real numbers. But I don't really write that. I write the fancy R. And that's why you see that fancy R on the screen, okay? So remember, infinities get arrows in the direction that the infinity is. So I have an infinity on the left and I have an infinity down on the right. So that means I'm gonna have an arrow on the left and I'm gonna have an arrow on the right. So you're just shading the whole number line because it's all real numbers, right? Negative infinity is positive infinity. means every value in the world. So now we're going to do some examples with actual numbers. I know, crazy. Okay, um, so we're going to ex oh, sorry. express the interval in set notation and graph. Yes, that's, that makes sense. <laughs> express the interval in set notation and graph it. Okay, so I have parentheses, negative 1, comma 4, bracket. All right, so we got to do set notation first. So looking at your notes, you could just look at your notes and find the example that has a parentheses A, comma, B, bracket. Because with that example that's in your table that you have a parentheses A, comma, B, bracket, I'm literally going to copy that answer and instead of A, I'm going to use negative one and instead of B, I'm going to use four. I'm going to, and I'm going to copy that just the same exact way because that, that's why I gave you all those nine examples because those are the only nine options that you could get, all right? So what you got to know is, is that parentheses always go with less than signs or greater than signs. They never go with equal signs, okay? Brackets go with equal to signs, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. This is the equivalent of when you was in Algebra 1 and you used to do inequalities. And when you did inequalities, you would shade the circle, open circle or closed circle. Or you would do linear inequalities, it was solid line or dotted line. Remember, open circles and dotted lines meant the value was not 
included right and solid lines and closed circles meant that the value was included well this is the same thing except we're talking about equal to's and parentheses and brackets right brackets mean the value is included parentheses mean it's not included um, equal to symbols mean the value is included no equal to symbol means that the value is not included you've done this before you're just learning different notation okay so here we go. And remember that when we are copying the graph, the graph is the easiest part. I just label the number negative one and then a four, and I put a parenthesis on the one, a bracket on the four. That's all, you did that. You did that. So I think you can figure out the next one. So on the next one, I have 2.5 comma four, both have brackets, right? So I'm gonna go look at the example on my tables where I have bracket A comma B bracket. And instead of A and B, what am I gonna use? I'm listening. Negative 2.5 and four, a 4. Yes, 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 yes. Good job. So I would take that example. I would copy it. Brackets mean I have equal to symbols. So both my equal, both of those symbols have equal to symbols. X is a number such that X is greater than or equal to 2.5. X is less than or equal to 4. When I draw my graph, I have 2.5 on the graph and a 4 on the graph. Both numbers get a what? A bracket. Very good, honey. Very good. <laughs> I wonder if years from now when somebody watches a video, they're, they're going to catch that that's a Tabitha Brown joke. I don't know. Okay, so now we're going to look at negative 4, comma, infinity. So what you would do now is you would go to your table and you would look for an example that has parentheses, A, comma, infinity, close parentheses. And instead of A, we would use negative 4. And the infinity is already where the infinity is supposed to be, honey. So I would know that if I have negative four into infinity, that's negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven, negative eight, negative nine, negative a thousand. I mean, sorry, I did that wrong. <laughs> that's negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, a thousand, a million, a trillion, right? Every number that is greater than negative four. So here I go, right? Um, and if you looked at the example on your table where it has parentheses A, um, and then infinity, parentheses, all we did was replace A, right? So on my number line, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna replace A with negative four. And remember on a number line, infinities always get arrows. Good job. So all the way to infinity. Parentheses on the negative four, arrow all the way to infinity. I'm gonna let you try these next three on your own. Pause the video actually try them on your own you want to actually learn okay oh I should be dancing <laughs> See what you got so if you took we're taking notes that means that you went back to your table and you went to go look for an example that had bracket a comma b parenthesis and it tells you exactly what to do right so i have numbers between negative two and five including negative two but not including five boom okay x is a set of numbers such that x is greater than or equal to negative two and x is less than five. So number lines are the easy part, right? I just draw a number line, put a negative two, put a five, put a bracket on the two, put a parenthesis on the five. Ain't nothing special going on there. All right, let's see if you did the second one correct. If you didn't, pause the video, do it, and then look at the answer. Okay, what did you do? Did you go back to the table? Yes. You found an example with a bracket A, bracket B? Yes, so good. And all you did was replace A with one and B with 3.5? <gasps> yes, good. Yes, honey, yes, honey. All right, um, so obviously you're gonna get that. Okay, with our uh, graph, graphs are easy, right? Put a one, put a 3.5, put a bracket on both. Bada bing, bada boom. Um, 
last but not least. Oh, I spoil it too quickly. Oh, so sad. Anyway, it's fine that I spoiled it too quickly. So, um, negative infinity to negative one. I went back to the table. I went to go look at negative infinity to negative one, right? Um, that's all the numbers in the world that are less than negative one, right? So negative one, negative two, negative three, negative a thousand, negative a million, negative a trillion. All of those numbers. And the one has a parentheses on it, so that's why I use a less than symbol. X is a set of numbers such that X is less than negative one. I keep reading them for you guys so that you know how to read them. <laughs> anyway, um, remember infinities always get arrows in the direction of the infinity. So if infinity is on the left, on the left, I should have an arrow on the left. Ta-da! That's not bad, right? I hope not. <laughs> okay, uh, so we're going to do intersections and the unions. All right. Intersections and unions. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so we have to learn some new notation. The new notation that we are learning is called unions. So the U stands for unions. Intersections is an upside down U. Okay, so a union is when you have a combination of things. An intersection is when you have an overlap of things. So let me give you an example in real life. You and your boo thing, your significant other, your partner, the person that you choose to spend your life with, right? Y'all get together and you bring all your stuff together. Keep that example in your mind, all right? So let's say I have graph A and graph B, right? I need to combine all the values from graph A and graph B. So what that means is I'm gonna show you a boundary. So this blue square represents all the numbers the combination of both graphs so when I combine both graphs this is my answer all the way left all the way right I'm gonna show you the boundary again the boundary should match up you're like I'm just looking at a whole bunch of shapes and number lines and parentheses and brackets miss B I don't have no idea what you're talking about I got you right so now we're gonna look at an intersection okay an intersection is you and your boo thing you and your bae, whatever y'all be calling them these days, um, your significant other, your partner, whatever, you and your bae, what happens is you're not combining your things, you're just trying to figure out how many things you guys have in common, okay? So if I take the same graph A and the same graph B, right, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna focus on what we have in common. So I'm gonna show you the boundary again See, the boundary is a lot slimmer now. And it's just where the two overlap. So this is what my answer looks like. So the boundary line should still match up on your final answer. All right, we're going to use numbers now. Because I know you're like, wait a minute. Okay. So I have... A brain fart. Okay. Parentheses one comma four in union with bracket two comma eight. Okay, so numbers between one and four in union with numbers between two and eight, including two and eight. So this is the first graph, one and four. This is graph A, right? This is graph B. We know how to do graphs already. Graphs are not the hard part, right? Now, when we talk about a union, Union is a togetherness. It is a combination. It is you and your boot thing taking all your things and bringing lives together. Okay? Union is the widest one boundary all the way to the other boundary. Okay? So now, when I put that answer on a number line, it looks like this. So I start at 1 and at 8. Notice I have a parentheses on the 1 and a bracket on the 8. Yes, this this is the this is it. This is what we need, people. This is what we need. Okay. I'm gonna show you the boundary line. This is your answer. Final answer. Okay. Sometimes they might want a graph. Sometimes they might want the the interval notation. Parentheses, one comma eight bracket. Pay attention to what they're asking you for. Okay. Try the next one by yourself. The next one is an intersection. Intersection is just what you have in common. 
so the union is everything. We brought all our stuff together. So if both people in the union had a microwave, both microwaves came to the union. But if you're doing an intersection, an intersection is just like, what do we have in common, right? So if we both have a microwave, we just talking about microwaves right now. I don't know if that example made sense to y'all, actually. <laughs> okay, intersections. Okay, so we have graph A and we have graph B. Focus, what is the intersection? Yes, the intersection is a much smaller part. So when I talk about my answer, it's just from two to four. And the, on the edge of two is a bracket, on the edge of four is a parenthesis. Make sure that your final answer still matches up. So then bracket two, four, parenthesis is my final answer. Yay. Okay, I'm gonna make you do um, the next one on your own. I will show you the graph and you can figure out what the intersection is and what the union is, okay? Take some time, pause the video. Oh, I feel like I need to sneeze. Um, Y'all get it, get it, get it. Do, 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 do. I could never be a drummer. Do, 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 do. Sorry, wow, I got a hand, I got a hand there. Okay, uh, did you pause the video? Did you actually do it? Please tell me you did. Okay, so um, remember that when it is a U, I'm talking about the union, everything. Both graphs, we bring in everything to the table, okay? So that means my leftmost boundary is one with a bracket on it. My rightmost boundary is uh, six with a parenthesis on it. So on the graph, that's what it looks like, one to six. Make sure your boundary lines still match up. My final answer is bracket one six parenthesis let's see if you did the other one if you didn't do the other one yet pause the video okay you have graph a you have graph b remember this is the intersection we're just talking about what we have in common just what we have in common so what we have in common is right there so on a graph it would just be from two to three that's it that's it. And there is a parenthesis on the two and a bracket on the three. So my final answer is parenthesis two, comma three, bracket. That's it, guys. In a nutshell, that lesson is over. It's done. Wow. I can't believe it. You should go back through the video. See if you can figure out the questions without my help. Um, and that's how you know if you really, really learned without looking at your notes. And if not... I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.